I would love to know what you predict for your RSN future. You know, that's one of the things we've had the privilege of working with you all on. And, and I know that there's other equity ownership in it. It's not just a Fenway thing, but I think this is a maybe a baseball overall question, not just a Fenway question. What would you predict for the RSN future and how that might fit in with how you're thinking about your organizations? I can't resist sharing the Penguins have an unbelievable amount of distribution. What a wild success story they are from an RSN perspective. So you've got some <laughs> a couple of really powerful properties in your portfolio already, even if you don't add an NBA team. Yes. So we, the short, honest answer to your question is, I have no idea where all this is going. I don't think anyone really, truly does. It is so complicated. There are so many long-term agreements in place, distribution agreements. It's a very, very complex landscape, as you, you mentioned. All, all I do know is that from our perspective, to the extent that Fenway Sports Group can own the content, uh, the, the intellectual property uh, that you and I were discussing, owning the Red Sox, Pittsburgh Penguins, Liverpool, Roush Fenway, we think that has inherent advantages to how that content gets distributed. And, and we're in a different situation in, in each of our different sports, specifically in baseball. We are partners with the Boston Bruins and we distribute Nesson throughout New England. The fall off or decline in subs has not been um, as dramatic as I think maybe in some other markets. Obviously, we're blessed with, well, right now, the hottest team in hockey, the Boston Bruins, not, not the Pittsburgh Penguins, the, the, the Boston Bruins, who are just a iconic franchise, kind of must-have winter programming. And then the Boston Red Sox must have summer and, and spring programming. So we've seen a very strong linear business. However, because we work for owners that I mentioned are entrepreneurial, also demanding and, and driving us forward, truly, truly, they were trailblazers two years ago when uh, they challenged us to launch a direct-to-consumer product offering. And we're very proud that last year we launched Nesson 360 as kind of a uh, just a pilot program, and it, it worked. Uh, it, consumers bought it on a direct basis. Uh, they are, We have subs for the Red Sox and the Bruins, and it's a complementary service to Linear, obviously. Um, but as that paradigm shifts, what we have the ability to go direct to the to consumer. And we are sort of a microcosm of what the industry has to figure out. You know, it's very, very complicated and confusing for the leagues and, and the individual uh, teams to, to, to figure out this, this road ahead. Uh, but our strategy has been control the content, control its distribution as much as you can. So you sort of control your own destiny. I think in the end, there's going to be sort of a leveling out. I, I do think someone once told me very much wiser than me, they said, there's only two types of businesses in the world, bundling and unbundling, and then bundling <laughs> again, and then unbundling. So I think we will hit a bit of a equilibrium here where you're going to have a certain percentage of the pay TV universe that is just not going to go away. They're, they're going to they're going to live for another 30, 40 years. I hope I'm among them. And then you have my kids generation where they may not be cable customers and they'll just they'll buy all their content direct. What I can tell you is as an avid consumer of lots and lots of content, my cable bundle still exists. I get my my internet and my my TV. And now I've added on all these streaming services and I'm paying more than ever yeah. for, for content. I mean, much more than ever, which you know my wife reminds me of often. So we're gonna have to figure out how to effectively price and package and dare I say bundle uh packages <laughs> and content back together. So look, I, I know what Commissioner Manfred is committed to, and that is creating the best possible content, the best game possible, creating the best version of baseball, and then having the team owners be able to deliver that game to our consumers and to our fans. If you take care of your product, I know the NFL, the NHL, NBA, the soccer leagues, everyone thinks about it the same way. Put the best product you possibly can out there the most interesting, compelling, dynamic content, and consumers are going to want to going to want to purchase it. How they purchase it, uh, still to be determined. And so we're playing in this direct to consumer world and in the traditional 
cable bundle, linear cable world. Um, and I think that'll continue for, for a while.